What's up everybody, Coach Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Overwatch video, and this video is the heavily requested 5 tips to dominate on support. Many of you support mains that are coming over from Overwatch 1 are having a hard time, and many of you new players don't know how to carry your terrible teammates on support, so we're gonna break it all down with these 5 tips, but smash that like and subscribe because literally 98% of you are not subscribed to this channel, and I really appreciate the support. No pun intended, but let's jump right in. Now the first common misconception that is holding you back from carrying on a support is the misclassification of supports as healers. You have to understand that while supports do heal, and it is important for them to do, that's actually not their primary job. Their primary job is to support the team and enable impactful plays. You have to understand that supports have crazy potential impact, and every single one of them can make a play that doesn't just rely on healing. Supports can make crazy team fight winning plays. Think about a Lucille that speeds in and lets you overwhelm an enemy that is trying to get their bearings. Or an auto that gets a crazy nade playoff that allows your team to get multiple kills. Supports can definitely heal, and that can be really, really important, especially to keep your teammates topped off so they don't die for free, and your teammates can actually challenge certain objectives or try to take a matchup in a favorable way. You can get so much more than just that value, and it's very important that you're constantly trying to extend your impact range beyond just healing, and you also need to realize that for the majority of the supports, you can also add damage to team fights and get kills yourself. Ana has no falloff range, which means she's actually one of the best characters at pressuring Afara. We have Zen, who has some of the highest DPS in the entire game. Moro, that will often have more damage than her DPS and more heals than her other support. You'll find it a lot in games games where a tank feels unkillable, where you'll have DPS that are focusing said tank, but the supports are not aiding in that, and it leads to a fundamental lack in focus fire and can create a fundamental imbalance in many of the games you're playing. Next up, we gotta talk about positioning. And as some positioning fundamentals on support, you need to be thinking about playing the high ground because it makes you much more difficult for enemies to actually contest you. For the vast majority of characters, they're going to have to go the extra mile to route to you if they want to deal damage to you. And on top of that, the high ground gives you the flexibility to back away off the high ground and not submit yourself to fire. Jump down as a form of transition, making it a lot harder for enemies to confirm the kill on you. And of course, it's a lot easier for you to hit your abilities and make more impactful plays when you're playing said high ground. You also want to position close to natural cover, giving you the flexibility to run away from fire, ultimates, or enemies diving onto you. Remember, once you can kite away from an enemy long enough, your passive healing will kick in and you'll start to regenerate. And oftentimes, if you're playing your natural cover, an enemy uses abilities on you, you kite away as they chase you, you get healed, you could actually win that matchup because you're fighting them with all your abilities at full health when the enemy already invested tons of abilities to try to chase you around the corner, but you've already got your healing back. It's very important that natural cover becomes an ample part of your play style because any character that is caught isolated without their team or without cover is going to die no matter what if enemies try Try to attack you. On top of that, dependent on what the enemies are playing, your positioning needs to fundamentally change. Not just because your role changes in a game, like for instance, you're a Brig and you have an on a duo partner and the enemies are multiple divers. Your positioning needs to be tied and glued to that Ana to protect her from ever getting killed by these enemies. Now let's say, hypothetically, you're going up against two snipers as Zenyatta. You don't have to be as afraid of being isolated on that character because you don't have enemies actively seeking you out to try to kill you you have instead enemies playing more back towards their team looking for pickoffs and flanking or trying to make a more proactive play can actually work out in that environment it's not going to be always good but you need to understand that how you position and the plays you make can be directly punished differently dependent on what type of tools and abilities that the enemy have based on their character choice now, the third thing you need to do to become the best support possible is you need to analyze your teammate's impact. Uh, you see what I did? Okay, sorry. Pocket who is best. Basically, as a support, you need to start evaluating how good your teammates are and what impact they will bring. And this better helps you understand who is most optimal to invest the maximum amount of resources in. 
Let me give you a Genji example. When you give a Genji a Nano and the Genji goes in and maybe he gets no kills. Okay, first time, whatever. We'll try it again. You try for it the second time and he gets no kills again. You might want to start second guessing giving this Genji Nano over and over again and instead look for more optimal situations mid-combat, Nanoing your tank, trying to keep someone alive that you could get guaranteed value rather than betting on a player in your team that has proven consistently that they're not actually capable of doing what you need them to do. On top of that, let's say you have a really god tier tank that is just caring, like a Zarya that is getting full charge, saving teammates, popping off. Invest as many resources as you possibly can into this person, because this person will carry you straight to victory. And while I did say that supports are not always healers, if you are enabling someone that is carrying more than their weight on the team, it could be worthwhile to sacrifice some of your playmaking potential to maximize the hard carry that you identify on the team. But it requires you to analyze your teammates and change Change who you're prioritizing at multiple points in the game. The fourth tip to dominate on support is earn that mechanical mastery. Many supports are actually mechanically the hardest characters to master in the entire game. Most of them have very hard to hit abilities or shots, and they also require you to be constantly playing against some of the best DPS that are seeking you out each and every game. And if you can position well and hit your abilities, you're going to carry and win. And if you can't, you're going to be freaking Chow Main. Now this means you should put time and effort into practicing your mechanics, honing in on them, and trying to hit and connect with as many skill shots as possible. However, it's important to understand that with supports, there's an added extra amount of pressure, especially when enemies are coming onto you. Like, hitting an isolated shot when you're a DPS onto a target, like a support that's not moving, that can be difficult, but it's a lot easier than trying to hit a freaking skill shot on a Tracer or a Genji that is flying at you at 2,000 miles per hour. That's a lot of extra pressure, because you know if you miss, you're gonna die your margin for error is like absolutely small and that adds to additional pressure making these shots harder that's why i always suggest going to try it free for all you could practice a lot of the top support heroes the mechanically difficult ones and you could practice going up against many of the top divers in the game we also might be asking hey not every single support character takes a ton of mechanical skill to be good at i'm just making good decisions and things like that but you also need to think about some of the text with every character let's take mercy for instance which has some of the craziest potential movement in the game and if you're going to actually main this character, it would be a very good idea for you to learn every single bit of the special tech involved. And that could be true with Mora, that could be true with Brig, whatever character you're actually picking or playing, it's a good idea to reach that mechanical mastery because it will make you far better in a lot of these 1v1 matchups when you have no resources from your team. Now, last but certainly not least, the number five tip to dominate on support is optimizing your support hero pool. Now, I do teach specialization on this channel, telling people to really focus in on a small hero pool so that you're not trying to learn too many complex things at once. And while that is definitely still true, on support in particular, it's a good idea for you to have several flex options that are strong in different scenarios with different team compositions. For instance, Zenyatta is a really powerful character that is strong against certain hit skin compositions and pick oriented compositions and brawl compositions. But if the enemy is going full on dive and they have a freaking Tracer Genji or a Sombra Genji and a monkey that's diving on top of you all at the same time, well, a really great player could make it work. It might be more optimal for you to be able to flex to something that has more survivability. And having characters that you main, but having another character that you can flex to when your character is being pressured at a very high rate rate per second can be one of the best ways to actually make sure that you're not that missing link or you're feeding or you're leaving a lot of value on the table you can still play your main the majority of the time but having some extra supports to lean on when things get very rough or your character doesn't fit naturally with your composition that is one of the best ways to ensure your success so that each and every game you make sure that you're getting value but still playing your main in the majority of games and applying these other tips to still get value and impact regardless of what the enemy team is playing in most scenarios Please like, subscribe, and join the Discord if you have any extra questions right now down below.